The COVID-19 pandemic took most of us by surprise. As the novel coronavirus continues to spread here in the United States and around the globe, most businesses and all social institutions scramble to deal with this unexpected crisis. My guest today, Dr. Sreiram Goy, Cambodian-American surgeon and professor at Baylor College of Medicine in Texas, has developed a COVID-19 preparedness kit for businesses and healthcare professionals. She joins us now from Houston, Texas, to discuss more about the importance of preparedness for such unexpected pandemic. Jumrip Su, Dr. Sairam Koi, and um, thank you so much for joining uh, the talking to Voice of America Khmer, as well as Sus Dai Sham Thamai. Happy Khmer New Year. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here on Voice of America. And it's it's so important to talk about the COVID-19 and how to prepare for this because this is critical. And as you mentioned, a pandemic that's affecting us all globally. Yes. And um, uh, first of all, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic is such a surprise and we're living in such unexpected time. So how prepared were you for this preparedness uh, toolkit? Um, how did this uh, project come about? So, so this project actually started about six months ago. I've been working with the Aspen Institute as an Aspen Institute Health Innovator on how healthcare leaders prepare during a crisis. Um, I had previously served as the chief milk officer for Medicaid for the state of Louisiana and as a deputy undersecretary for the US Department of Veterans Affairs. And in these different experiences, whether we were tackling the Zika epidemic or the opioid crisis or Hurricane Harvey or some of the flooding that happened in the state, what I saw time over and over again was that during a crisis like this, it's just like it being in the fog of war. Mm -hmm. A healthcare leader or any leader of an organization doesn't have time to sift through 50 pages of resources. And there's excellent material out there, but we need it to be somehow consolidated, to be concise and direct to the point that helps a leader of an organization prepare by knowing where are their weaknesses, what areas do they need to prioritize, and how do they develop a strategic plan. So I started working with the Aspen Institute to develop toolkits to help uh, organizations lead during whether it's a, a crisis of a hurricane or, or an infectious outbreak or, or during an upsurge in medical errors that an institution might be facing. But then in January, we started hearing about the um, novel coronavirus coming out of China. And I knew that it wasn't a matter of whether this would be spreading across the globe. It was a matter of when. And yeah. so we shifted gears. We directed all our efforts to organizing these cool toolkits around how do we prepare businesses and healthcare organizations to be optimally prepared. So um, I think that uh, I don't think anyone's been truly prepared for COVID-19 but you can be prepared for a crisis. And there are some basic principles that are relevant regardless of what kind of crisis it is. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I understand that your preparedness toolkit is a website. Um, could, could you walk um, us through, and especially the audience or businesses or healthcare professionals who want to use that, um, how do they use this uh, uh, product basically to, 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 uh, to the best use? So these toolkits are tailored. One is for healthcare facilities and another is for businesses, non-healthcare businesses and organizations. And uh, the goal was one, it needed to be rapidly completed, something that someone could do within minutes because you don't have hours to do this sort of thing when you're in the heat of war. Two, it needed to be something that uh, can be rapidly deployed all across an organization from the CEO of the organization to the frontline supervisors. So all layers of the hierarchy of an organization participate in this to really give you a full assessment of your preparedness. And three, we want to make sure this was free and available to anyone in out in the world in globally. We want to get this into the hands of every community in the world. And so we made it available free, completely free. And also anyone with access to internet would be able to get onto this website. We initially started very simple, just a, mm -hmm. like a, a survey tool that we developed it. And you just click on the link and go on there. But then we knew that we need to get the outreach further beyond that. So we partnered with Get Well Network, which is a national organization, a corporation, and they um, usually uh, charge businesses a, a subscription fee to participate in their products. But as a good for the community, they supported our product um, to be on their platform and free. 
and they made it available to their about 700 uh, healthcare facilities and clinics across the United States as well as internationally. And so anyone can access it off of uh, that platform as well as uh, the other avenues we've made it available for. Right. Um, and so so if you could also give an example, um, I actually went through the website and I, I understand it is a set of uh, survey questions and um, you can fill it and get uh, some response. I did get a score at the end. I just was thinking using my own organization office as an example, as a, you know, as a media company. Um, and but but could you tell give you examples of, you know, what are maybe some of the probably common questions that, that are important and what should a user expect, you know, just the feedback or are there any additional information that you should expect that we should expect from uh, the website? So most of the questions are yes, no questions in addition to demographics. So the questions are, are you cross training your employees so that, for instance, if um, the, your staff in accounting um, get sick or they have fam family mm -hmm. members who uh, develop COVID-19 and they need to be in quarantine or to take care of them, what are you going to do? Will you have someone who can jump in and take over their duties or will your organization shut down? So cross-training your employees is one example of one of those questions. Other uh, example of the questions are, have you assessed your essential functions and how those essential functions impact your community. For instance, if you're a garbage company that picks up trash from the, for the community, if you're shut down and not able to perform because your, your staff are all sick, that is going to dramatically impact the, uh, the community because there's the risk of uh, diseases uh, being spread as, as trash is lying around and, and infectious spread. Or if you're a utility company, the entire community absolutely depends on access to water, to electricity, and other other util basic utilities. So, really, uh, this this these questions assess how essential are your functions, mm -hmm. how will impact the community if you're not prepared, and what plans do you have in place to um, proactively. Uh, empower yourself to be able to get through COVID-19. The things that you can do, for example, that we assess are uh, what are your essential functions and what can you pare down so that um, if it's a non-essential function, perhaps you should divert your resources to a different direction so you focus only on what is absolutely essential right now. So mm -hmm. most of the questions, again, are yes, no type questions. And then um, beyond that, you ask, uh, how do I assess how I did? So it gives you a score. Like uh, for the healthcare assessment, there's about 16 questions, and for the business assessment, there's about 20 questions. And it gives you uh, a score. And if you did five out of 16, then you see that you have a lot of areas that you really need to intensely work on. But if you say got 14 out of 16 uh, uh, as being prepared, then you know that you can direct your resources and, and, and really focus on certain key areas and prioritize those areas. And then the second step beyond that is, what specifically should you be doing to prepare? And that's what we've been working. Um, I actually uh, brought together a group of healthcare leaders, uh, mm -hmm. physicians, and frontline providers from Johns Hopkins, Emory, the American Hospital Association, and other major uh, healthcare institutions, as well as business leaders. And we compiled what are the best practices for COVID-19 preparedness. And these are things that are really essential, such as how do you mitigate local transmission? Or um, what are you doing to protect your staff and to conserve uh, your resources? And mm -hmm. uh, talking about key communication strategies to, to make sure you communicate with your teams and your staff as well as communicate with the community. Right, and, and just to clarify, uh, so some of, um, is it, am I correct to say that some of the questions are more applicable almost immediately? For example, you know, what do you do, you do if one employee gets sick with the virus? You know, do you have a plan to replace? There were some other questions I noticed that seem to be slightly more preparedness in the future. For example, if, if I don't, if the organization does not have uh, prepared uh, a plan yet, that's something probably we, we have to wait for the a future pandemic. Um, am I correct? This is how you would use it? 
I absolutely, you can use it at any stages in the pandemic. As we know with COVID-19, mm -hmm. there are surges. There are communities such as New York City and in California where they are already peaking and at the surge. And then there are communities across the world like in Cambodia where the cases are much lower and you're in the early mm -hmm. aspects of the pandemic. And this tool can be used at any stage. Ideally, you want to use it early so you can prepare mm -hmm. early because when you prepare early, you're mitigating transmission, preventing cases and helping to flatten the curve and that is absolutely critical so prevention is key because that's how we save lives but it's never too late to start uh, using this tool and even if you're in the middle of the surge this helps you reassess um, how prepared you are and you can do this multiple times to reassess maybe a week ago you had five out of the 16 preparedness items being addressed and then you've been making strong efforts and then you reassess and you see you have 15 out of the 16 and it helps you just come back in a very objective way see what have i not yet done so that i mm. can objectively reassess that and uh prioritize resources since, since you mentioned the different stages uh earlier of, of COVID 19 in the united states and in cambodia i wanted to ask you uh, it sounds like this tool is very useful especially as you said at the early stages so my question is um what's the status of uh this project so far and how many languages are they available if it's very useful let's say for cambodia and Khmer, is it already available so right now it's available in English. Our goal is to translate it out into other languages. I'm absolutely open to collaborators. If anyone wants to collaborate with me and help us translate it and get it out globally, I would love that. And as we mentioned earlier, we love collaborating with other organizations that can, that can uh, put this on their platforms to help uh, uh, share this free resource. So um, any organizations that want to help provide this tool for free to the community, we will absolutely welcome collaboration. And um, on a broader question about preparedness, um, since and I wanted to ask you, um, let's say for a country like Cambodia that's at the early stage um, in any other countries, um, what would be your advice to those countries who are at the early stages about you know, some of the maybe common missteps that you've seen in other countries that they could avoid? That is such an important point, Sapat. Um, if you're in the early stages, this is your chance. You have the opportunity to save lives, to very much flatten that curve and prevent having much, much more higher mortality uh, uh, tolls. So the things that are really key are washing your hands, social isolation. Do not go anywhere that you don't need to go. And um, for instance, at a hospital, what we recommend is if you can avoid doing any things that strain the, um, the system. For instance, elective non-emergent procedures, delay those, push those back several months so that you can focus your resources on uh, the, the, the critical issue now. And in addition to focusing your resources, it helps prevent what we call local transmission. It helps mitigate transmission because you don't have people coming into the hospital for unnecessary uh, 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 traffic and not just hospitals, but any organizations. By delaying things that are not necessary now, you prevent people from coming in, bringing in the virus or exposing other people. So key things, social distancing, hand washing, whatever isn't urgent, delay that so that you can try to help flatten the curve and mitigate transmission. Mm. Um, because of time, I have one last question. Um, I know you, a more personal question. I know you and your family uh, are survivors of the Cambodian genocide. Now the COVID-19 pandemic is a different type of uh, crisis, but um, real quick, how has how have you and your family been dealing with this? That's, that's a really good point. So my mom, she's in her late 70s now, mm -hmm. and she is just such an amazing woman. She survived the, uh, the ge Cambodian genocide. She uh, Happen, she she was able to help my sister make my sister and me rest, uh, escape from Cambodia and, and to start this new life here. And I'm so grateful to my mom. And I, I see her as this amazingly strong woman. But I think what I learned from her is resilience and gratitude and hope. And what I, I see the parallels between this crisis and that crisis is that you don't ever give up and you you you, you keep that hope and you hold on to that hope. And then the second thing is, even though I see my mom as this invincible woman, the fact that she's 77 years old, she has comorbidities. This is a classic population that's high risk for 
for COVID-19. And I worry about her. And each and every one of us should remember that that is the face of the high-risk population for COVID-19. And even if you're young and healthy, you should do everything you can to social distance, to wash your hands, to minimize your travel mm. so that you can protect our elders, the people who've sacrificed so much for us and um, who, who've given us such a great legacy. So, um, uh, I am grateful for all that my mom's done. And because of that, that's why I work to to try to help others. Interesting times we are we are in. Um, thank you uh, so much, Dr. Sui Ram Goy, uh, Cambodian American surgeon and professor at Baylor College in Texas for talking to us about the importance of COVID-19 preparedness and Jumrib Lia. Jumrib Lian Akun, thank you.